Hi there, Neil Livingstone here. Today I'd like to talk to you about how best to use recruitment agents. Now, uh, I'd say 50% of you guys just rolled your eyes uh, and believe me, I understand why. Uh, recruitment agents can be highly annoying, highly irritating, highly frustrating and super expensive. And quite often, as a business owner, you feel trapped that you don't, you can't find uh, good people or enough people uh, and you have to resort to using a recruitment agent. Um, if you feel like that, you should buy my program. Uh, I can help you with that. But regardless of that, uh, agents are a necessary, necessary uh, part of most people's world. And the general rule of thumb is if you develop uh, recruitment strategies in the channels other than recruitment agents that I help you with or can help you with, um, you still need to use recruitment agents as a rule. And my, my rough rule, rule of thumb is if you've got a really good recruitment process, um, agents will typically be maybe 40 to 60% of your overall recruitment. Um, so it is, it, is, it is important for most people. So to, to, to utilise uh, recruitment agents well, you have to understand their mindset how they make money um, and, how, and therefore how they operate. So they are selling their time effectively. So when you hire someone, uh, so when you hire an agent, uh, they make money or they make more money when they solve your problem because they only get paid by commission. So they want to find someone that you will hire, not necessarily someone that's good for you. It's important. We'll come back to that. They will... So they will they will try and find a person that you will accept as quickly as possible so they can move on to the next role, which may or may not be with you or another client. Um, so that is how they think. Uh, so uh, you need to you need to keep that in mind. Now, the first thing they'll ask you uh, is we need to be an exclusive arrangement for me to spend all of this time. I'm only getting paid by commission. I need to know. Uh, that you're not out there uh, and I'm wasting my time. Uh, you're out there with other agents. Well, what do I say for this one? Uh, I'm sure you've had this uh, discussion and you've probably got your views. I don't think there's a right answer here. But typically, if I haven't worked for an agent, I am reluctant to give them an exclusive arrangement. Uh, so I will usually start by just saying no um, uh, and seeing how they react to that. Um, and if, if, if they say, no, we need one, which they will typically normally do, I will then say, well, I don't know you and I don't want to lock in and uh, have to go through you until you're proven. Uh, so, and, and then you can compromise. They might want uh, six months or three months or whatever. So just keep it super short and say that um, I if you're not if you're not delivering on what you promise, I will I will I'll, I will give you a warning, and then I will I'll walk away and go somewhere else. So, uh, you know, there's a bit of a balancing act there because once they know they have some exclusivity, they will invest time. Uh, so so you need to give them some level of comfort. The next thing um, is price. Uh, never take the first price. Uh, even from a, rec a good recruitment agent, uh, I've seen prices well north of 20%, which I think is outrageous. Typically, uh, when I'm uh, hiring, uh, and, and it, the commission rates do vary by country and within industries, uh, but somewhere around the uh, 12 to 15% is where I think uh, for most roles uh, is, is reasonable. Uh, sometimes you will not be able to get there. Uh, but if you need to compromise again, maybe maybe uh, give them a decent or above a rate that's above what I've just said, but say to them, uh, if we use you again and we work and we both think this is a beneficial arrangement, uh, you're probably going to invest more time getting to know me and recruiting for the first role going forward the rate needs to be within that range are you in or are you not in that typically uh and, the, and and agents know that they need to compromise good ones need to know they compromise 
which leads me into how do you find a good one? Well, some people may argue there isn't one, <laughs> no such thing. There is. Uh, they need to uh, listen. They need to listen. Okay, so um, how you know they've listened is that, and you need to be very, very, very clear about what type of person you're wanting, not just from a technical viewpoint, but the non-technical attributes. And I cover that um, in one of my other videos where I think it's the one where I talk about interview questions and attributes. For me, I always say I want two things. Um, and I, I say this to the agents as well. I want someone that's action orientated and someone that I can understand what motivates them so I can align the results they want to the results that I want. Um, so they do listen. Uh, typically, they'll throw you, uh, they'll test you out. Uh, they will throw you ones that um, are not the best people. Uh, and you've got to establish very early on that you're going to be reasonably picky. Uh, um, now, you can't be too picky because they will, that will really de demotivate them. So you need, to, you need to give them very clear and honest feedback that they haven't listened to the brief. Uh, they've given you people that they should have vetted uh, harder and you will, you'll, you'll be rejecting those people uh, and, uh, and you're patient and you'll wait for the right people. Now, what that does, you've got to get the balance of this right. If you go too far, that will totally demotivate them and they'll just uh, ignore you. But if you get the balance right, what that will do is they'll go, it, it, their thought process will go, ah, okay, I actually need to give these people new good candidates. And th that's what you want to be driving into their mindset. Uh, I also recommend that you catch up regularly with your agent, usually once a week during a campaign. Uh, and, and that's a level of accountability that, they don't normally have. Now, they might be emailing you with candidates and whatnot and talking to you during the week anyway, but if they know at 3 o'clock on a Friday or whenever you set this call up with them, uh, this 10-minute call, that they have to report activity, uh, believe me, they will focus on you uh, more than their other clients. Uh, I always say when I'm talking to people about um, collecting money, and you know, um, debtors, uh, the people that get paid are the people that shout the, the longest and the loudest, um, they, they're irritating and they, and, and they get paid. Um, so I'm not suggesting you're irritating to your agent, but you certainly need to um, be setting that uh, regular meeting so that they are feeling like there's some accountability there and they're gonna have to have a, give, you, uh, give you examples and stats of what the activity is that they've done. So uh, yes, uh, necessary, evil. Uh, don't be scared to fire an agent. Um, uh, some, some people uh, just accept, um, uh, accept you know, uh, stuff from agents that they shouldn't. Um, if you've got these other channels working, these other eight channels that I uh, help my clients with, it really puts you in a, a, a position of power to be able to uh, fire your agent if you, you 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 need to because you do have other avenues and you and and you you communicate that to them. So that's what I would um, say in relation to to agents. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. There are other ways uh, that I can also help you uh, for free um, in the links below. There are there's a masterclass that you can look at, uh, which is a deep dive on how to build a five-star five star team of people around you. Uh, there is an e-book that I have uh, uh, also uh, do the same thing, but in, in less detail. That's called the five-star employee attraction system. Um, I have a LinkedIn group that you can join. Um, it's got lots of free material um, that I'm always posting there. There are other people posting and collaborating, other business owners in there. So definitely join that. Uh, and lastly, uh, if you would like to get on a call with me uh, and see how I can uh, really help you uh, more than I currently am, uh, there's a link below to my calendar and you can schedule a call where you and me can talk. Thanks for listening.